That's me. Hello and welcome back to episode 128 of Talk of Fame podcast with your host, Kaima Tigni. I'm super, super excited to have on lifestyle content creator, Clementine Leah Spicer. Thank you so much for coming on, Ina. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So you have a fashion store where you create your own hoodies, sweatpants, etc. You create all these amazing things, which I looked in and it's so amazing. I've been I really want to buy everything on that store. So- like, so like, I wanted to like ask you, like, what made you decide to create a clothing line to pursue like your love and fashion, basically? So I've always loved fashion. I feel like that's like like a lot of girls love fashion so I've always wanted like my own store of some sort like ever since I've been little and when I was like 11 or like no when I was 13 actually and I started like doing content creation I had some of my fans asking for merch um and that's how I got started with like the clothing line and all of that but I kind of like shifted away from just merch I don't really do merch anymore it's mostly just like common clothes and like cute like I don't know like trendy Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah like like with like like how long did it take you to make like a line and everything because you said you started with a merch like I know like at some points like it takes forever to design and stuff it does. for me like when I try to design it takes me like forever to figure out what's going on like what am I it supposed- does and I'm also working on a new line right now so I'm at the earliest stage of it but it takes a lot of time because you have to find like suppliers you have to like figure out the shipping you have to figure out the stocks of it it's just like it's a lot like there's a lot that goes into it um and I also want to make sure that like it's like good quality and Mm -hmm. like a fair price and all that stuff so like and the designs too and like logos and everything like there's just like there's so much that goes into it so yeah it's a lot of like planning Mm-hmm. and like you like as you said like you're coming out with a new clothing line and there's so much happening right now for you like what can you tell us, tell us about the clothing line even though it's in like the earliest kind of stages yeah so I'm still trying to figure out like the suppliers and stuff but I've been working on like the words or like the quotes that I want to have on the pieces of clothes and I also just want to have like very like comfortable like selections so I want to make sure that it's like good quality but I also want to not just do clothing. Like I'm working on like doing maybe something like beauty or even like home decor, like a candle or something. I don't know. Like I want to expand my collection a little bit. Oh, I love that. Like, are you wearing like your coll- a shirt from your collection now? Or is it like a something from a different well, this store? this is like, no, it's just like a random. <laughs> <laughs> but let me see. I don't know if I have anything from my store here. I have a lot of things actually like I kind of try to order like at least like one of like each thing that I sell so that I make sure it's like good to sell and like you know so it's good Mm -hmm. but I'm not wearing any of it right now sadly (laughs) yeah you need to send me those things like I'm literally like like fashion is literally my ideal like I'm literally open to anything like I'll be like okay well I'm buying this I don't care how much money I have I'm like I'm getting everything (laughs) I know when it comes to like fashion I'm like money does not matter at this point like it's like I forget about it I know like what is like your favorite stores to buy from besides like kind of your own thing I have a lot of favorite stores I mean I feel like I love like obviously like Urban Outfitters and like Brandy Mm -hmm. but I also like Zadigan Voltaire Mm -hmm. I love I love it there it's so nice Mm -hmm. um Fred Siegel is pretty nice too um like Princess Polly Mm -hmm. I feel like there's more. I just can't really think of it. Oh, mm-hmm. aloe, aloe yoga is really nice. Or mm-hmm. Ritzia. Yeah. Yeah, like, have you tried Sheen? Sheen? Yeah, Sheen is good. But I feel like, I, yeah. Yeah, but I don't really shop from them that often. I like to, like, go in person and, like, make sure. Yeah, it's, you know? yeah I'm the yeah. same exact way. Because, like, I, like, when I, like, when you buy stuff online, it's so hard to figure out, like, if it's going to fit you or not. That's exactly. Exactly. Like, Sometimes it looks cute in photos, and then I try it on when I get it, and I'm like, this does not look the same. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like when like you like buy something you love, like you're like, oh my god, it gets a top or pants, but then you wear, you're like, oh, this is not look like the photos, like like, this is not what I wanted. Literally. And like the good thing about Sheen is that everything is so cheap. I know, so cheap definitely no it's really really cheap for sure mm-hmm. like for like a shirt it's like five dollars and for like and earrings it's like a dollar each it's insane but like yeah for earrings though like 
I have to be so careful. Like, I don't know. Like, I bought, like, these $5 earrings in my ears. Like, it was so bad for me, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because, like, too. you need to be, like, careful, like, when you need to buy, especially earrings, because like, you don't know if it's, like, affected or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Like, how, like, with going back to your clothing line, like, how do you kind of come up with product ideas for your clothing line? Is it, like, a whole kind of process? Well, I take, like, Okay, so I love fashion and I have like a ton of clothes. So I take like what I like and like my style and then also like what my friends like. And I just try to like gauge to see like what's trending. And then based off that, like I'll try to create something like in that niche. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like something like trending that like my friends or like me that I would wear, like something that like I actually like hmm I get you like sometimes like you just need to go off your basal style because if you yeah, like exactly. if you don't go off your basal basic style then you're like oh I don't think I'll buy this I need to go off something that exactly. I want to buy or something like if I wouldn't wear it I'm not gonna sell it you know yeah I mean? exactly and like I wanted to go into a little bit of content creation a bit and like you've been doing content like making content for a long time now in a couple of years mm-hmm. and like you have received like millions of views on Instagram TikTok and YouTube like that's absolutely insane man like like I know I never really expected it either like you never like you never expected to make millions of views as a content creator like you never as time went on I never like went into doing all this like wanting to be a content creator because I was initially an actress Mm -hmm. when I was 11 and then I had an audition for like doing YouTube videos with this YouTuber and that's how I really got started like I started doing YouTube videos and like long like long videos but now Mm -hmm. it's like more like short TikToks and I like that so much better Mm -hmm. but it all kind of just happened naturally like I never just like went into like doing this like being like oh my god like I want to be a content creator it's just like it all happened and I love doing it yeah like do you think like acting like kind of shape you into a content creator like I know like you did acting and mm-hmm. you kind of switch over to content creation like did you think like acting paved the way for you as a content creator or is it kind oh, of like a- yeah because I feel like acting taught me a lot of like qualities like to be like outgoing like mm-hmm. expanded my personality a little bit made me more fun um and just like prepared for like this industry in mm-hmm. a way And I feel like being a content creator, like, you have to do acting sometimes. Like, you have to have, like, that, like, bubbly personality or, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like they are similar in a way. Mm -hmm. But it's just, like, content creation is more, like, like, improv. Yeah. Whereas acting is, like, scripts and, like, all of that, which I didn't like. Like, memorizing all those scripts was not for me. (laughs) It was, like, it was so overwhelming sometimes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, for me, like, I can't, like, memorize, like, a, like, a thing I have to do earlier in the day. Like, I would easily. I know. No, it was insane. It was, like, 15-page scripts sometimes, and I was, like, in school, and it was just so overwhelming, because I was, like, how am I going to memorize all of this? And, like, most of the time, it's, like, you don't even hear back from the, like, casting, Mm -hmm. so it's, like, I don't know kind of a waste of waste of time sometimes yeah exactly and sometimes like this is how like the entertainment industry is like you're more likely to get more no's than yeses and that's like the worst part is that like when you want to get a job and especially actor you want to get interviews you want to get press you want to gain it's like it's seriously the hardest thing you have to do because even though you put a lot of dedication things still don't work out you get mostly get no's and you just still don't get it even though it took a a lot of time yeah I mean I feel like a lot of people do succeed too but Mm -hmm. it takes a long time and a lot of rejection so I feel like as an actor you can't take anything personally and you can't get discouraged because you're gonna get rejected a lot Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah Mm -hmm, exactly and like like what is kind of like your creative process like as a content creator because I know you said you're aligned to TikToks and doing all these things like what is kind of like your creative process trying to kind of make content and trying to figure out what your viewers like like how do you kind of come up with that um well I have to like come up with like new ideas every day because I try to post like one to three times a day on TikTok so it's like a lot of like ideas that I need to come up with 
But what I do is I go on like my explore page or my for you page and I just try to find like any viral trends that I could do. And then I never want to like copy content. Like I want to have like my unique like take on the trend. Mm-hmm. So I try to like relate it relate it to actual experiences that I've been through. Um, and hopefully other people will will relate to like those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I wanted to ask you, like, did you see that chicken dance? That's like, there's like a like kind of like a chicken thing, like dance that everyone's doing right now. It's like, it's like a it's song. Right? Like the two dogs or whatever. No, I don't know actually. Like I like, he's like he's like you. There's this like this dance or that everyone's doing. It's like, it's like a Selvis nut type of song. Like I will send you it. Like I'll send you it. And I'm sure you I'm sure it's probably on your TikTok. It's like this yeah. whole dance that's kind of like going viral right now. Yeah, honestly, I can't dance. Like that's one thing about me. Like being a content creator, like I just I can't dance. And it's like every time my friends like want to do videos, it's like a dance. And I'm like, you guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Like like I legit just got got into like a job like I just like working for a baseball team near me and like I literally had to do dancing and like that I'm like I'm a horrible dancer like how am I supposed to dance in front of thousands of people if I can't dance like I know what am I supposed to do dancing is so hard like I just like I've never like caught on like I took like classes and I just can't it's like it's I so know hard. it's like as much as like I love dancing it's just like if you like dance in front of a thousand people and embarrass yourself like that's not it like it's like I, I can't do that I, I can dance in my room and just be my own <laughs> entertainer but then when you're in like thousands of people people that you know or may not know and when you recognize you, you're like oh my god like this can't be it like this can't happen no yeah I just I don't know but it's okay I like I don't know the content I do is like mostly like, lifestyle or like relatable like POVs Mm-hmm. So it doesn't require any dancing, thankfully. But I feel like occasionally, like, I do learn to dance or so, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I was sending you that dance. I'm sure you've probably That's seen it. I probably have. If it's, like, trending, I definitely have seen it. Mm-hmm. And, like, as we kind of go into a little bit of charity work, like, you are basically very passionate about charity work and currently are helping a big cat rescue in Los Angeles that's uh, helping save hundreds of cats in that in yeah. Los Angeles and like what like why you decide to kind of help this organization like how did you kind of decide to kind of help them okay like so that? in 2017 I wanted a cat and I was like looking around with my mom like all over LA and we um found this cat shelter Perry's place and we loved like Okay, so what they do is they take the cats from the shelters that are about to get killed because there's like, an, there's too many cats. Uh, so they save the cats and they like get them adopted and stuff. And I've adopted like two cats from them. And ever since like I adopted my first cat, I started doing like a fostering program where you foster kittens for like two to three weeks. And I've done that with like over 50 cats. Um, but now I do like a cat enrichment pro- program like every two weeks where I go for like an hour and I just like socialize the cats or like feed them and stuff but I'm just like I or uh volunteer for them because it's like it's a good cause and it's like I don't want like all these like innocent cats to like die in another shelter so like I want to like promote them so that they are able to get more cats adopted and um all of that Mm-hmm. like do you are you adopting any cats right now or is it kind of like oh you're just kind of happy with what what you have well, I have two cats already, so I feel like that's enough because um, it is a lot of work. It's like you have to feed them like twice a day and like all of that. But I just don't need another pet right now. And I don't know. But obviously I do. Like I wish like I could have like a room in my house where I just like had like a bunch of pets. Like that would be so fun. I know. Like I legit like I used to have like three dogs and two cats like I'm like I can legit have more like I'm obsessed with animals especially with dogs and cats like I only have three dogs now but like like dealing with three dogs is crazy especially adding two cats like I love cats I'm a legit cat person especially with dogs but like I can like like you said I can literally have a whole room dedicated to cats or dogs like it would be amazing like I have a whole yeah they're so like low maintenance too it's like you can go on vacation for a month and like 
just like yeah I'll have someone come like once a day it's like yeah and like just give like them food or water though, or something yeah for dogs though like you have to take them on walks like all of that so it's like, yeah it's like it's easy because like you like they can just uh, keep a low profile life and just have someone come over and be like oh I'm just gonna give them the food pet them or whatever then leave like you don't need to worry about them for the rest of the day like it's literally yeah. the easiest like job ever and I like I love like animals it's so cute mm-hmm. I have two like, turtles too oh really yeah I oh, bought them like six years ago though and like in Chinatown and like they were five dollars for two of them and I just like didn't expect for them to live like for seven years like they're already seven years old oh my gosh um so it's good that they're still alive but mm-hmm. like I was surprised they cost like five dollars each like that's crazy. no they were like two dollars each they were so cheap oh my gosh like yeah. especially for a turtle they're like a hundred bucks I know usually in like like animal like stores small too. like they were literally they were so small it was insane. oh my gosh that's probably why they were like so cheap thing. I know they were babies they were so cute that's crazy but they're they're healthy and like they're all good now mm-hmm. like how do you kind of like I know like you're still in school and um like in with being a content creator it takes so much of your time and so the school like for me it's literally so hard to balance trying to my work and now balancing school like I'm a sophomore yeah. right now and like how do you like balance being a content creator in school like I know basically it can be very difficult at times yeah no it can be really like overwhelming sometimes but I feel like I'm a pretty organized person so like managing my time and like time management really isn't that difficult for me because I go to school like maybe like six seven hours a day and I try to like mm-hmm. do my work like whenever I have free time during that time mm-hmm. um and then when I come home it's just like I check my to-do list and I just do whatever is most urgent to do and yeah honestly it's not like that difficult but sometimes like I do have events where I have to leave school early and then um I am gone like the whole night so I don't have time to do anything Mm -hmm. but I guess I I don't know I've been balancing it and I have straight A's so yeah (laughs) that's it it all works out I'm like wait are you a sophomore in high school or college uh high school really Mm -hmm. oh my god wait you're younger than me wait where are you are you are you still in high school or you're in college no I'm a junior in high school oh really yeah Wait, what year were you born? Were you born in 2004 or? Six. Oh, two, wait, you were born in 2006? Yeah, you too? Yeah, I was born in 2006. No way. Wait, what month? I was born in September. May. Oh, in May? You're, so you're a couple of years, months couple, older than me. Yeah. Wait, like, how did, cool. like, you must have, like, got earlier, like, than I did, because, like, I was born in September, then, like, I was supposed to, um... Like, go in earlier, but I missed the deadline. If I was in the deadline, I would be a junior. So, like, mm. which is crazy to me. I have some friends who are juniors, and they, they were born in, like, 2007. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No way. Like, that's, like, like, I, like sometimes people software. ask me, like, are you, like, a junior? I'm, like, new. No. Like, even if I was born in 2006, I'm, like, well, if I didn't make that deadline, if I was born maybe, like, a couple of weeks earlier, I would have made the deadline be a junior. Like, some people that- confuse me for being a junior because of, like, what, I, what you asked Oh, born. really? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, because my best friend, she's born, like, November 2006, and she's a junior. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't know old. what's up with that now. Like, <laughs> I know. Maybe it's different in, like, California. Yeah. Like, because yeah. I know, like, different states are, like, kind of, like, um are different in terms of like what you're or grade they are yeah like do you know like did you see like california's like removing honor societies or something no i didn't like i guess like i don't know if it was california i think it was california i guess they're moving like hot like on just honor societies or something for equality or something i don't know i could be wrong yeah, I saw it was like something like about like removing our societies or something in California. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, I was wanting to see if you knew, but I was like, oh, she's like, you're from California. So I wanted to see if like you knew. Like, yeah. But like, I wanted to ask you, like, this is a funny thing I have for you. And like, what is like some advice or like upcoming content creators that kind of want to make it out and basically have find a reach and this? trying to reach more people as a content creator 
Okay, so if you want to become like a content creator, I would say it's really important to be consistent. You have to be posting like maybe one to four times a day because like out of like those four that you post, like there is one that is going to do well. Um, so yeah, be consistent, uh, be like relatable, have like content that's not like boring because like if you're just like lip singing to a song, like that might not do well. Like you need to have like a story structure within the TikTok um and then also just like be very like tough skinned because like uh there's like so many people in the industry that are like fake and like gonna try to use you and stuff so you have to like look at it as only a business and not like for friendships Mm because otherwise like you are gonna get hurt because a lot of the people are like very fake (laughs) Mm-hmm. like have you kind of like t- like faced that as a content creator because I know like a lot of people like to use you for content and they use you for big friendships I personally have dealt with that a million million times like have yeah. you kind of faced that a lot like as a content creator um a little bit yeah but it's like it's mostly like it's they're not real friends like there's no like loyalty it's like they're just like fake friends <laughs> so yeah. but like not all of them like I obviously like have like some influencer friends that I love um but there's a lot of them like they're very calculating um and they're just gonna try to take whatever opportunity they can even if it means like stabbing you in the back so mm-hmm. yeah. no, that's, that's kind of like, like why I hate about being in this industry is like fake people and misuse you that's just like some of the people though it's like a very like yeah there's obviously some good people though, but mm-hmm. yeah, like careful. there's like like good side of it, and there's one bad side of it. Of yeah, I agree. And yeah, so okay, that's gonna be like the end of this episode. So thank you so much for Perfect. joining, and I hope everyone enjoyed listening to this episode. And thank you for everyone for tuning in, and huge thank you for coming on. I love chatting, and this thing is so much for taking the time. And I love chatting thank with you. you. So much. Thank you for the great work. Thank you so much. Likewise, again. thank you. Of course, talk to you soon.